Today, it's a nearly untouched portion of New Jersey, but it could have been filled with houses, lagoons, businesses, and the constant home of human activity during the summer. Narrow Great Bay Boulevard, also known as Seven Bridges Road, meanders through the marshes of Little Lake Harbor Township. Take five bridges, park at the end of the road, and walk to the small beach, and you'll get an unmatched view of Atlantic City and Long Beach Island. If a 1927 law was seen to completion, though, Seven Bridges Road would be true to its namesake. The other two bridges, one connecting Little Lake Harbor to Little Beach, and one from Little Beach to Brigantine, providing a shortcut from north and central New Jersey to Atlantic City and the South Jersey beaches, rewriting the shore's history forever. In the wake of World War I, the automobile was rapidly gaining popularity. By the end of the war in 1918, the state had adopted a system of numbered highways, taking over control of many county roads. One of those was State Highway 4, now more commonly known as Route 9. But that said, the highway didn't attract many from the north. Uh, this would have provided some greater accessibility uh, to northern New Jersey or even New York. Uh, but, you know, in the automobiles of the 1920s, you know, they weren't exactly like our cars today. If you live in Bergen County, that's a major, you know, two and a half hour trip uh, at that point in time. And if it's hot out, like, you know, it's not probably wasn't very pleasant. Fast forward to 1927, when the state legislator passed laws concerning a major overhaul of the highway system, and in came Route S4A, a spur off Route 4. The law read that the road was to be, quote, extending from Route Number 4, at or near Tuckerton, and extending to a point on Little Beach. Little Beach, located in Galloway Township, is the last undeveloped barrier island at the Jersey Shore, sitting between the Little Egg and Brigantine Inlet. Part of the original intent was that it was going to provide a quicker way to Atlantic City. It was going to cut off supposedly about 10 miles off the trip. And it was anticipated that it would, because at this time Atlantic City was growing, and it was anticipated this would be another route. Uh, it was confounded by the depression, by the difficulty of construction in this area, and a whole host of other things. The catch to this? The road would only be built if Atlantic City agreed to build a route from Little Beach to Atlantic City. If Route S4A was built to completion, a trip between the beginning of the Great Bay Boulevard and Senate Frank S. Farley State Marina in Atlantic City would have been 6.9 miles shorter than without it. When the Garden State Parkway was completed in 1957, a trip to the marina from Exit 58 would have been 5.3 miles shorter, taking the Route S4A route. In 1929, the state's Highway Commission recommended a construction program proposed $2 million total, $35.3 million in today's dollars, for the road. But the New Jersey Highway Department was extraordinarily powerful until 1947, and basically, uh, highway to, there were very few departments in Trenton uh, prior to, to uh, World War I. Uh, and then the highway department was created. And New Jersey had a dedicated petroleum tax at that time. So all of the uh, taxes on petroleum did not go through the state legislature. They went directly to the state highway department. Tuckerton was still a small village with fishing and shell fishing as the primary economic drivers. Construction started in 1930. Unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on your point of view, it um, took 10 years plus to resolve how to build the road across these marshes, how to, um, how to build the bridges across the five thoroughfares that go under the road. On the side of the developers was a lack of environmental regulations. Well, obviously, uh... It, there were no environmental regulations in those days and you could fill in wherever you wanted you could dig up wherever you wanted and just continue for example the railroad that came from camden to atlantic city the original one the camden atlantic in 1854 was basically built in nine months now it would take 10 years just to get the regulations to pass the uh, the various regulatory commissions and so forth however the atlantic county side was never built on June 14, 1938, the state transferred the task of completing the Little Beach to Atlantic City route from the county to the state of New Jersey. Even then, though, there was no action. 
And while a 1942 map still shows Route S4A, by 1946, it was no longer marked. The route was gone. Route S4A eventually became the Route 87 we know today once the Atlantic City Brigantine Connector was completed. No road from Tuckerton to Atlantic City, no northern shortcut to the resort, and no change to the way we drive around the Jersey Shore today. The main reason the road never connected Ocean and Atlantic counties was because of the shooting thoroughfare splitting Little Beach from Little Lake Harbor. When they reached shooting thoroughfare, the water behind me, they realized the water is too deep, it's too far to build two more additional bridges over this water so that it would reach Brigantine and eventually Atlantic City. They didn't anticipate the difficulty of building very large, long bridges over a very dynamic area. Um, In true New Jersey fashion, it's possible there was political involvement as well. After 1929, the Great Depression hit. The typically flush state highway department's financial condition worsened. Maybe Atlantic City or the Atlantic uh, County politicians didn't think it was worth the battle. Maybe they were given the choice of improving Route 9. And, you know, certainly at that time, Hudson County was the, the political power. I think uh, probably the attention of the freeholders at that time was really, they saw their the market for Atlantic City much more in terms of Philadelphia than northern New Jersey. Both Hughes and Marino agreed that Atlantic City and Brigantine would look similar today even if Route S4A was built, though Brigantine likely would have developed faster than it did. More than likely, though, it would have been much different for Southern Ocean County. When the state became more affluent in the set, or the, the demographics became more affluent in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, maybe there would have been uh, houses of the type on Long Beach Island, you know, if it were uh, relatively unspoiled at that point in time. But the other option would have been, it would have been very small, tiny houses, affordable houses and the like. But again, attitudes, uh, certainly in the, in the 20s uh, and even in the 40s and 50s was growth is good. While not formally proposed, there was the idea that Little Beach could provide an even bigger connection. An artist's rendering in the 1930s showed a circle in Little Beach that would connect Little Lake Harbor, Brigantine, and the southern end of Long Beach Island, essentially creating a continuous coastal road from Barnegat Light all the way to Cape May. Uh, it's confusing to me why anyone would propose this, and um, especially in these early days. Abel, Hughes, and Marino all agreed that the environmental impact of the route would be great. The Edwin B. Forsyth National Refuge, the Jacques Cousteau National Estuary Research Reserve, the Great Bay Boulevard Wildlife Management Area, and the North Brigantine Natural Area all are near the path of the incomplete, then known as Route S4A. Furthermore, like the White Horse and Black Horse Pikes connecting Atlantic City with the mainland, coastal flooding would have brought road closures. Even Great Bay Boulevard is washed out on days with some combination of a high tide, onshore winds, in the full moon. It's actually fortunate to a large degree that with sea level rise, climate change and sea level rise, that this road was not constructed. If this had become the equivalent of the Atlantic City Expressway, much of this natural area would have been would have been destroyed. And that's particularly critical to us at Rutgers because of the value of this location. For the Press of Atlantic City, I'm Joe Martucci.